your host, Kyle Yates, along with Rodney Williams. Say hello, Rodney. Hello there, Rodney. Uh, we are very privileged this evening to be speaking with Jan Harzan, who is the director of MUFON. Um, good evening, Mr. Harzan. Yeah, good to hear you, and thanks for having me on your show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you getting back with me. Um, let's just hear a little bit about you, you know, where you grew up, and then how you got into the whole UFO. Oh, sure. I, I grew up in a little town called Thousand Oaks, California. It's uh, about 40 miles northwest of uh, Los Angeles. It's out in the Ventura County, and uh, when I was a kid, I'd actually uh, had a close encounter with a UFO, my brother and I, and that's what got me interested in the whole subject to begin with. Um, and then I found out many years later that there was an organization called MUFON, so I started to attend meetings and found out more about it, got actively involved, became a field investigator, and uh, ended up working my way up the uh, chain of command and state section director, assistant state director, and then made it onto the board and uh, here some 30 plus years later, I'm uh, executive director. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was about uh, 10, I was exactly 10 years old at the time. Um, what, what had happened was my brother and I were uh, reading the newspapers back in the day. This is back in the early 60s. And back in then, when you had a sighting of a UFO, they didn't call them that. They called them flying saucers back then. They would uh, put it on the front page of the newspaper. So as young kids, we would op often pick up the newspaper and there'd be a, a picture of a flying saucer or a UFO, big story on it. My dad uh, got uh, two different men's magazines back in the day, True and Argosy. And I remember there was an article, I believe it was in the Argosy, on uh, uh, Major Kehoe from uh, NICAP. And uh, I was impressed as a little kid because this guy was here a major in the Marine Corps, uh, he's retired, and he was telling the world that these craft were from outer space and they were not from here. At a time when, when you turn on the TV, if they had one of these shows, there was always a debunker on saying that, oh, no, this is just a mirage, just an illusion, you know, just a hallucination, uh, nothing real here going on. So uh, my brother and I started talking about it. We decided these craft must be using some kind of electromagnetic propulsion. I don't know how we would know that as kids, but we did. We were playing around with uh, electricity and different things. So we decided we'd build one of these craft, and we designed a 30-foot craft with three pulsed electromagnetic engines in it, and we were planning to put this thing together in our backyard. Then one day, my mother took us to the store with her thrifty drug. I don't know if you recall those. I think they've gone out of, out of business now. But uh, And while we were waiting for her to do shopping, we went to the magazine rack, and we were looking, and in the lower right-hand corner, tucked way back in the corner, was a little magazine called Flying Saucer Review. It was from the U.K., and it was a half-size magazine. So we bought a copy for a buck and took it home. And as we're reading it together, uh, there was a page that said that these flying saucers are seen around military installations, nuclear power plants, and places where anti-gravity research is being done. So we looked at each other and we said, well, we're doing anti-gravity research. Maybe we want to come here. Uh, literally within a month, this craft shows up in our backyard. My brother comes into my room about 6.25, 6.30 in the morning gets me out of bed, tells me there's something going on in the backyard. So we went out in the backyard to check it out. And uh, lo and behold, we didn't see anything back. Uh, we looked down the house and could to where his window was, where he said there was some activity. Didn't see anything. Turned around to go back in the house, and there, literally 30 feet from us, hovering 10 feet off the ground, is a landing craft with landing gear on it, frozen in the sky, making a humming noise like a transformer on a telephone pole late at night. So... Uh, we were just stunned. We were standing here staring at this craft that shouldn't be there. And uh, that's when I knew for sure that these things were real because I'm staring at one of them. Uh, I could go on if you want me to continue. I mean, I'll, basically, the thoughts that went through my head were, number one, oh, my gosh, these things are real. So you're staring at a craft that shouldn't be there. Number two, I thought, wow, this thing looks like it's man-made. Now, why did I think that? The craft was like a brick if you blew it up to 8 to 10 feet long by 4 feet wide by 3 feet tall. Uh, and perfectly smooth the edges and then put four landing gear on it. Uh, between the landing gear on each side, there were crossbars with a bolt where the scissoring function would be. And it was that it was that bolt that made me think it was man-made because uh, it just seemed out of place to have a bolt. Everything else was perfectly seamless on the craft with this bolt. Uh, but then I stared at it a little bit longer and I thought, well, 
that's strange. There's not a seam or a rivet in this entire craft. It was perfectly seam seamless, although it's metal, metallic. Uh, but there were no no windows, no doors, no nothing. I mean, it was like it was almost like blown glass. And I don't think we had the ability to bend metal back in those days uh, without putting rivets or some kind of a, a seam in it. So, um, you know, I basically, after sitting there for about two minutes, I said to my brother, I'm going to go get a camera. I ran into the house. We'd end up locking ourselves out. Uh, and so I pounded on the door. Eventually, my older brother opened the door. Now, he'd been asleep when we went out there, but he was awake now. And I ran in, got a camera, ran back out, and my brother is standing on our swing set in the backyard looking out to the west, and it, the craft's gone. And so I said, what happened? And he said, well, it was just frozen in the sky for a minute, and then it slowly started to drift to the west and then shot out of sight, just poof, gone. So that was our case. Now, he was nine, I was ten. We looked at each other like, who are you going to tell this to? Because no one's going to believe us. We're just little kids, right? So we actually kept it to ourselves. Uh, but the interesting thing is, on Monday morning, when I went back to school, I told my best friend Tom about the case. We were out on the playground. I was fifth grade at the time. And I go through this whole elaborate story, a lot, probably a lot more detailed than what I just did now. And, and, and he's listening to me, listening to me, staring at me. So I paused to let him say something. And you know what he said? He said, do you want to go play baseball? And I... I, I, I'm thinking to myself, did you just hear what I told you that happened in my backyard this week? I mean, it was like, it was like, it just went right over his head. So at that moment, I knew this isn't something you could tell people because if it's not in their worldview, that just doesn't exist. So uh, I pretty much kept my mouth shut about it for 20 years. And then what happened was I was in a, I was a branch manager for IBM, uh, and I was, I was a very young one. I was in early 30s, and I was running a $150 million business with 150 employees and so uh, I had a business coach and as I was working with this business coach uh, one day he said to me you know if you had all the money in the world Jan what would you be doing and I paused and I said well I think I'd probably be doing UFO research he said really why is that and I explained the whole story I just told you and he said well that's interesting and he, we kind of went on with our session the next time I came back about a month later at the end of the session he turns to me and says hey I thought you might find this interesting he hands me a flyer and the flyer was for the UFO Expo West at the LAX Hyatt, uh, Los Angeles Airport Hyatt. And uh, so I asked my wife, is it okay if I go to... I didn't have no idea people went to UFO conferences. It was like beyond my thought process. I mean, uh, I was a corporate guy, just doing my job, raising a family. And I went there and I was shocked. There was a thousand people at this conference, literally. Uh, there were over 100 vendors. There were like 35, 40 speakers. And uh, my eyes were like big as saucers just looking at all that was going on. And one of the vendor tables was the MUFON table. And so I spent some time talking to them about what they did. And I said, that's interesting. And they held local chapter meetings up at the L.A. Pickwick Center in Los Angeles, Burbank, actually. So I started driving up there and attending the meetings and getting to know the people and stuff. And then eventually someone started a chapter down in Orange County where I live. And I started attending those and became on the board and uh Almost immediately, I ended up taking it over because the individual who started the the, the group got sick, got ill, uh, and had to had to depart. But um, it's been a it's been about a 25, 30 year journey, so it's been kind of exciting actually. Well, it sounds like it. Um, now I know back in the earlier days, like when they had the Roswell crash, you know, the forties, fifties. You know, and then the the whole phenomenon was in movies and TV shows. Um, do you think the attitude towards actually, you know, being able to meet a, an alien uh, species is a lot more accepted now than you think it would ever have been back then? Well, that's an interesting question. I I think it's it's certainly more acceptable now than back then. But what I'm finding when I speak to groups. And typically, I try to speak to non-UFO groups, just the general public, because I think that's where we need to get our message out to. I mean, it's great to go to UFO conferences and talk to all the all the uh, folks who, like ourselves, are excited about this whole subject. But that's not really going to move the, the needle forward. Uh, but when I talk to these groups, I'll always ask them the question, you know, do you think somewhere out in the vast universe there's intelligent life, right? And 100% of the hands will go up, everybody. Scientists, no matter what, it's 100% of the hands go up. 
because of what we know about exoplanets and what it takes to create life, we know that there's got to be something else out there besides just us. Uh, but when I ask the next question, which is, how many of you think sometime in the distant past and or the currently, uh, this intelligent life may have visited Earth. I use words may have visited Earth. Only half the hands go up. So that says there's still half of the people out there who don't believe alien life has ever visited this planet, um, which I find fascinating with all the evidence that's out there. Uh, we were you know, on the 13th or 14th season of uh, Ancient Aliens and uh, all the stuff that that's uncovered. We've got uh, just tons of cases that we've provided to the TV and movie industry about uh, our case file, out of our 100,000 case files. So um, it's just unfathomable to me, but I had a chance to hear Machio Kaku speak um, a week ago or two weeks ago in Barcelona, Spain. He was at a conference where I was a speaker called the Third uh, World UFO Congress. And he, he says, as a scientist, we're looking for, you know, they're looking for that hard evidence. They want to see the physical, you know, craft. They want to touch the alien. They want to, you know, do this stuff. And it's a challenge to do that, understanding that and even taking Machio Kuku's own work, uh, hyperspace, he talks about there being three levels of civilizations, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Well, well we don't even make it to type 1. Type 1 is when you enter the interstellar stage. We're a, we're a type 0 civilization, which means you're between the caveman stage and interstellar travel. And what stops most civilizations from getting to the next level is they end up destroying themselves. I mean, they nuclear weaponry, whatever, the whole planet gets blown up, right? And we're still at that stage, in a very tricky stage, because I think it's not impossible that we couldn't have a nuclear exchange of some size on this planet, but I, I know there's a lot of people working against that. Uh, so if you're a type 3 civilization, uh, that would be someone who could create, literally create their own universes and create their own uh, reality, if you will. So if you're dealing with a type 3 civilization, in a, and you're a type 0 civilization, how do you collect data? on a type 3 civilization. I think it's very difficult to do that. Uh, but that would be my own observation. I mean, I realize all the scientists want something they can touch, see, and feel. A uh, piece of the craft, you know, this, that, or the other. But uh, I don't think it's as it's, it's easy as it looks. Plus, we seem to have a little um, covert operation going on where anytime anything that is tangible is found, it, it immediately gets confiscated or, or taken away or disappears. So, um, between them, and, and the other thing, we find a lot of these covert operations are destroying the data. Uh, why, I don't know, but for whatever reason, if they have the data, whether it's pictures, videos, whatever, it's being destroyed. Uh, I've seen a number of instances where that's happened. So um, it's unfortunate. I do think we're at a tipping point, and with the announcements back in December 17th of two, or December 16th of 2017 in the New York Times, uh, and some of the revelations that have come out since then by Lou Elizondo and the folks who were part of the ATIP program, I, I think we're at a point where the genie's out of the bottle and we're going we're gonna to start seeing a lot more information flow down. It might not be as fast as we want to see it, but it's certainly going to continue to flow, and I think that's a positive thing. Um, I know everybody else can't see it, but I'm trying to get my George Sukalos hair going here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I know Rodney's got family out there in Roswell. <laughs> Rodney, you wanna you wanna jump in on this? Uh, yeah, actually, um, there was a couple of things when you were talking uh, when you when you were describing the uh, the craft that you saw when you, when you were a child. Sure. I was wondering though, because um, I'm actually listening to somebody talk. Because I mean, my, my uncle, of course, he never seen anything. He's only from he, he he's when he was still alive when I was younger. He took us out to uh, the crash site. Oh, okay. you know, the most the most country thing did. We saddled up the horses, drove her, you know, got out close to that area, and we rode our horses out there. And uh, when we were kids, and of course, it's just a big patch of dirt, right? You know, with some prairie dogs running around, but. Um, that's the first time I even heard of anything. And of course, me being a, you know a grade school child, I didn't quite comprehend that. Right. Uh, so I was there going, oh, okay, yeah, cool, dirt, you know. And then as I got older, um, and it became more, you know, a lot more documentaries came out about Roswell, and then more conspiracy theories have come out. And uh, oh, I remember one time I asked my uncle, um, I'm probably 19, 20 years old. Yeah, and 
Pastor. So you you guys were around when all this was happening. Oh yeah, yeah. He goes, what what happened? I mean, what what do you guys know about it? What do you what do you what do you think? And my uncle only told me this, and I he never did say anything. He just said, um, some of us we don't really like to talk about that anymore. And he shut up about it, and I wasn't going to push him, of course. Um, and few, just a few little things he would mention over the years. Um, I know I've driven by the hangar where the 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 what the UFO supposedly was kept at, for a short period of time before that. I think they sent it to Dallas afterwards. And um, I, I noticed, even though it is uh, no longer, it's still owned by the military, U.S. military, I believe the Air Force, uh, and is no longer in operation. But there's still armed, very heavily armed security around that particular hangar for some reason. And mm-hmm. this was up as recent as the 1990s. Uh, when I was out there, and I, you know, I was with my cousins. We were just driving around and stuff, and uh, I did notice that there was there were still some heavily armed uh, military around this hangar, but it doesn't look like it is even operating, or nothing's operated. It, just, it looks abandoned, to be honest. Yeah. When I saw it, yeah. So I couldn't tell you, but I was thinking when you were talking, in describing the air the aircraft uh, that you had saw. Have you decided? Have you ever tried to like? look up other reports of people describing what they saw maybe did they see the same thing that i did and where was it how long ago was what was the time span yeah we have we have another case in our files from the same time period excuse me which is uh, i think from minnesota uh that has a similar type of craft in it but the interesting thing about these flying saucers or or these ufos is that uh, the ones that appear to be true ufos um you know they're all shapes and size they're all shapes and sizes i mean the, the typical size is about 30 feet in diameter, interestingly enough. That's what, the, what we were trying to build when we were kids. Um, the typical shape is uh, spherical or circular. Um, again, that's what we were trying to build when we were kids. But you, you get them in all shapes and sizes, triangles, chevrons, uh, you know, weird-looking craft. Uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just all I know there was one other case that was very similar to, the, to what we saw back in the same time frame. So I've got like a million questions, and I know we're kind of limited with our time with you, but uh, one of the things that has always kind of been in the back of my mind, and that's from watching Ancient Aliens, I know, but do you believe that our government is actually working with species from other planets? Well, see, that's a trick question, because I I personally don't think our government is doing much of anything. I, I think it's privatized into some kind of a corporation somewhere because uh, when I think when I say the word government in my mind conjures up the Congress Senate and the and Congress and uh, also uh, president you know and maybe the judicial branch and I, I honestly believe that there may, there may be somebody in that group who knows what's going on but I think it's very limited if, if nothing at all um, I think a lot of this stuff got taken offline back in the 40s and 50s and shoved over to a private group somewhere that, that pretty much runs everything. Because um, I'm being told by certain people, the high levels within the government, that there's no, uh, like, for instance, there's no black projects with triangles in it. Yeah, I, and I, yet I find that very hard to believe because we have depictions of large triangular craft in our skies. Now, some of them are completely seamless, but others are very angular. They have tubing. They, they look like the back end of a refrigerator. Um, I have to believe that the stuff that's very angular, got protrusions, and looks like tubing from the backside of a refrigerator, I got to believe that's something we have, we ourselves have built. Uh, the stuff that's completely seamless or integrated, uh, that's probably extraterrestrial, in my opinion. Uh, that's just my, my gut feeling. I have no data to back that up other than listening to different researchers talk about this stuff and understanding the data. Um, but whether they're working with aliens or not, that's a whole other question I really do not know. I mean, I, I wish I did. Uh, I have to believe somewhere, you know, my brother and I, when we were little kids, <clears throat> we played with electronics and electricity and stuff. And what, what was interesting to us was that when we were born, you know, the, the television sets <clears throat> excuse me, were made out of, <clears throat> excuse me, the television sets were made out of vacuum tubes. And, and it only took about five or ten years 
before literally, you know, maybe 15, where we went from vacuum tubes to integrated circuitry to, you know, a whole other set of stuff, uh, laminates, to totally integrated computer-type circuitry. I mean, your TV sets today you know, that hang on your wall, that's all just a uh, basically a computer chip, you know, that sits there. So, but, but that evolution happened over about 10, 15, maybe 20 years. That, that was a very, very rapid revolution in technology. You'd have to say to yourself, how is it that we were able to move that quickly through that technology in that short of time? Now, there's people who will say, oh, no, no. You know, I, my father was an engineer at Bell Labs, and, you know, they, don't, they did that. They made all this happen or whatever, or IBM or whoever. But I think we had some help somewhere. I don't think it just happened on its own, honestly. Exactly. Well, what, what about reptilians? Do you think that that's really a race? Yeah, well, we get reports of reptilians. It's not the, com it's not the common uh, report, but uh, most of it's the gray types or tall, tall whites. But um, we do get reptilian reports, and, and they're generally very, very detailed type of reports from people. Um, I did want to say, though, before we get too far away from it, uh, Rodney's comment on uh, Roswell and his uh, uncle's uh, comments about not wanting to talk about it. There's a really, really good uh, DVD available from the Fund for UFO Research. It was put together by Stanton Friedman, oh, probably 25, 30 years ago, where he interviewed uh, like 25 of the top first-hand and second-hand witnesses to Roswell. And when you watch that video and you listen to these witnesses recount their stories, Everyone to a man was threatened by the military that if they spoke about it or talked about it, their, they and their families would be, be would disappear, basically. I mean, some of the verbiage that was used was yes. yeah, be buried. I, yeah, I've yeah. heard that. I have heard that. That's actually the way he said it and the way his body link, my uncle's body language. I mean, I vividly remember uh, when he did that, and he just, it just, yeah, don't talk about it. Be yeah. quiet. And I, so, I remember him um, going in as as, a, as also you know and he talking to other buddies his old, other rancher buddies out there, and um, and they, I'm just listening to them talk and firsthand accounts you know when they would mention something like that and they were talking about Mac how Mac uh, just a Brazzle. couple of weeks or so Mac Brazel correct a um, couple of weeks or so not long after he had discovered. He uh, he was gone, like his bags packed up, and he took off and left. He yep. didn't last. He didn't stay much longer there. So, and they were all still they, at that time. They just like uh, nobody knew what happened. He just up and left. And for him being a ranch hand and working, you know, for the you know for the owner of that land, is he was pretty dedicated out there. And why he just up and left, they couldn't. They had no idea. Yeah, and the people who who are the disbelievers, they all say, oh, you, you can't keep secrets, you know, you can't keep, well, I'll tell you, when you're being threatened by a guy with a carbine, <laughs> you know, and, and being told that you and your family will completely disappear, you, you shut your mouth and you don't talk about it. Right, you know, right. So. so, Area 51, do you think that is really a front to keep people away from what may be the actual area they keep? you know, alien technology, the supposed alien, uh, Area 52? Uh, well, I mean, Area 51 was designed as a place to test our top-secret craft and built by Lockheed Skunk Works and other folks. Um, you know, the U-2 spy plane was originally tested there, the SR-71, uh, probably the Aurora that hasn't yet been announced, uh, whatever kind of craft that are available. Um, it would certainly be a great place to hide anything that's technologically advanced, you know, along the lines of a flying saucer or disc. Um, you know, Bob Lazar claims to have worked at an area just south east of there, they called it uh, S4. Um, so when you have people telling you, oh, there's no aliens at Area 51, that may be true, but, uh, you know, there, but maybe all the technology is kept in a different area like S4. So I just don't know. Uh, none of us will ever get in there unless we have a very, very deep clearance. I have spoken to people who have worked at Area 51, and uh, at least in two maybe three cases they've assured me there's no way they've never worked with an alien that doesn't mean that they have a clearance to know that or that they you know it's all compartmentalized so that's the other thing you find when you start working on these projects is they really take them apart to the point where you don't know more than just this little piece you're working on and that's it that's all you know 
Well, you know, I've I watched a episode of Ancient Aliens, and they believe there's an Area 52, and you know, I I tend to kind of lean towards that as well. I didn't know what, where, how you felt about it. Well, did, you, did they say where they thought it was? Uh, that I don't remember. I'm, you know, I've okay. got about a million of those shows in my head, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know specifically about Area 52. I can Google it here and just take a quick gander. But, I mean, there are other places where people, uh, when Bob Lazar broke the story, and actually he was the one who announced that there was even an Area 51, because before that the government uh, totally poo-pooed that there was anything going on. I mean, when you're standing on the road, if you look out there, there's nothing to see. So, you know, it'd be hard for you to even know there's a base out there because there's behind a mountain and all other rain. So, uh, but when he broke that story, there's many who believe that all the top secret stuff was moved someplace else, and maybe that's where the Area 52 story comes in. Uh, but uh, the, the other areas that I've heard that could possibly be places where stuff is being done uh, are in Australia, out in the outback, because it's very remote. Uh, but also in, in Utah, um, on uh, dug, dugway proving grounds, I believe. So, um, you know, those those are all other possibilities. These are very rem remote regions within our United States. You know, it's kind of interesting. If you look at a map of the United States uh, from space at nighttime, you got the whole eastern seaboard. It's like one big lit up light bulb, and then you got a bunch of empty space in the middle, uh, with maybe a little light here, a little light there, a little light there, and then on the, then you get the west coast and you get all the lights again. Uh, so there's a lot of empty space in the United States where you can fly stuff around and no one's going to see it. Very true. Um, another thing I was curious about was, uh, you know, the theory that aliens actually created us. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, yeah, I, I'm a Christian, so I, I, you know, I believe God created all of us. But, I mean, let's just say, and it's not an impossibility that extraterrestrials could have created mankind. Uh, but somebody had to create them. I mean, there's got to be a beginning to the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So how did it all come into being? And I think one of the things we're learning is that, um, and Einstein came up with this, was that our design of our universe appears to be more of a thought than an actual physical construct. Um, and so there's a lot of study right now in the UFO field with around the, and outside of the UFO field, around this thought of consciousness and how does consciousness interact with matter? Uh, thoughts with matter, and there appears to be a definite link between our thoughts uh, and bringing things into actual being. Um, and how does that all work? I mean, we're just starting to discover some of that now, and it should, in my opinion, create a very exciting future for us to, you know, how we how we act as human beings and how we interact with our reality around us, and you know, perhaps a reality is actually malleable. That's a very scary thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> to be able to change change your reality. Well, I read a book called The Secret. I don't know if you've yeah. ever heard of it. Um, Absolutely. And, and, you know, it says that when you speak positively, you have positive things in your life. You can manifest things in your life just by using your mind. So why wouldn't that be plausible that we are just a big thought? Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, uh, I mean, so what we're finding and what's been announced so far about these um, craft, this Tic Tac that was uh, on the front page of the New York Times and has been shown in a number of shows. If people aren't watching it, they really should watch this unidentified show that's being put on by uh, Tom DeLong and the guys at TTSA because they're, they're bringing out stuff with, with high-ranking Navy and uh, government officials that I, I think is going a long way towards getting the general public on board with this whole subject. By the way, I just did a little Google here. And Area 52, uh, or Utah 52, is, I guess is in, in Utah, so they oh. must be talking about the uh, Dugway Proving Ground when they say Area 52. Yeah, that's that's what it is. So, anyway, solve that puzzle. But it, <laughs> but but what uh, what we're finding is that these craft, these beings, whoever these intelligences are, the way they're getting here from there is they're ripping small holes in space time. Um, so wrap your head around that. Our universe is made out of space, time, energy, and matter. That's STEM. Uh, energy and matter, we learned back in the 30s and 40s how to manipulate that. We made atomic bombs out of it. Probably not the best use of that equation, but we did that. Uh, now we're learning that space and time are also transmutable, and they can move between one or the other. So 
if you can manipulate space and time, uh, you could literally build yourself a time machine or a portal that you climb through to a different place in space and time. doesn't mean you're necessarily in our physical universe. You could be in a completely different universe or a completely different space and time. But um, with that, it, it really opens up the possibilities ad infinitum. I mean, it's always interested to me that people who report these things, you know, sometimes they'll report fairies, you know. Uh, that's a big thing in, in England is they'll see little fairies walking around uh, or uh, different kinds of strange craft. Or we had the the wave of late 1800s where you had these uh, almost like balloon type craft floating through the sky, but that was before we even had that kind of technology. Where does that all come from? You know, is it coming from another place in space and time and it's just somehow coming into our reality and then it's going back out again? Um, all, all interesting questions and I think uh, the answers to those will lead to a better understanding of kind of who we are, where we're from, and why we're here. So. I'm looking forward to continuing the, the, the plunge forward to, to discover some of this stuff. Now, my wife and I, we were privileged enough to meet Amy Allen. I don't know if you know who she is. She's a medium, psychic medium. She's on, uh, what's the name of the show? Uh, the Dead Files. Okay. Anyway, we met her in Ohio, and she brought up the fact that we are going to actually get to meet them in pretty much the near future. Uh, do you think that's a possibility? Absolutely. I, you know, uh, Joe McMonigle, who was uh, remote viewer number one, or 101, I guess, for uh, the uh, CIA's uh, psychic spying project called uh, Stargate, uh, he wrote a book called The Ultimate Time Machine, which is all about uh, remote viewing and stuff. And in, in his book, uh, the Ultimate Time Machine, he talks about the fact that uh, he picked the date as 2072 or 74 in that range um, when we would actually make direct contact with an with a ET civilization. Now, even though that sounds like a long way away, because it's you know, a good 50 years out in the future, um, it, it's really not that far in the blink of an eye. It's like in the blink of an eye, right? I mean, I'm mm -hmm. 65. As, you know, I've had a sh in my opinion, I've had a short life. Uh, some have had many short, much shorter than mine. But uh, you know, I I think it's very, very possible that we will be meeting an extraterrestrial civilization in, in the next five, ten, certainly within the next fifty years. I think is a definite possibility. Yeah, the way she spoke, it sounded like a little bit sooner than that. I'm kind of hoping well, so. I, I'm I'm ready. Yeah, to, I'm ready to jump on board and fly away with them myself and get the <laughs> heck away from here. <laughs> well, we, we you, you know, I mean, if you want to do that, I mean, you, you, we've got many people telling us that they're having interactions with uh, non-human beings who have craft, and uh, so it's not like, I, I'm talking about open contact. I'm talking about where just it's very openly that they land, and we talk to them, and they come out of their craft. Um, that's not really happening right now, but, but we have plenty of people all over the planet who are interacting with non-human beings from wherever they're from. Um, so, so, so it's actually happening today. But I, I think she's talking about open contact, where it's just like everybody, anybody, and everybody who's standing there could see it, right? Yeah. Um, one of our listeners, Darren, he brought up a question that I actually had thought about too. Um, it may sound far fetched, but a lot of people say that the sightings of Bigfoot and of UFOs kind of coincide. Do you think that Bigfoot might be an alien? Well, I think Bigfoot is definitely an entity. I don't know if, you know, we do have reports where we have both a UFO and a, and a uh, Bigfoot sighting in the same uh, general vicinity or same time frame. Um, so there could be some kind of a correlation there. Um, I personally think that the Bigfoot is, is some kind of an interdimensional entity that kind of comes into our reality and has the ability to go back out of our reality. Um, I definitely think they're real. I mean, I've talked to a number of Sasquatch investigators, and there are some good people out there who do this. That's for full-time living. It's not something we major on and move on, but we do get reports of them, and uh, we treat them as if they're just another entity. And by entity, we mean like a like a gray or a reptilian or a insectoid or whatever whatever people are seeing these 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 beings. Um, and we categorize them and put them there, but they're all they're all quote unquote entities, if you will. Now, also, do you think that maybe a lot of the visitations we're getting are maybe interdimensional instead of you know across the universe? 
Yeah, I definitely think that a lot of this is interdimensional, but I think what's probably more likely happening is you've got these very advanced civilizations, type 2, type 3 civilizations, uh, visiting our reality, uh, and they have the capability to be interdimensional, if you will. And so, uh, yes, uh, it's interdimensional for sure, but I think it's just something that we will eventually figure out how to do ourselves, and then we'll be able to mimic what they're doing. And that may be 100 years down the road. It might be 500 years down the road, but we're, we're definitely going to get there. Now, Rodney and I are both ghost hunters. Okay. And um, sometimes I can't help but think that maybe what we're seeing is ghosts or as ghosts or not really ghosts, but maybe somebody from that dimension trying to communicate what are you I was yeah. Well, I always think of ghosts. I mean, I you know I don't know the answer to the question, but I always think of ghosts kind of as um, kind of dead energy. It's it's energy that's left over because of some uh, event that happened that was maybe traumatic or or very intense, uh, and it just keeps re- replaying itself, almost like it's on a recorder, right? Um, but uh, I don't really know. I mean, you guys would know a lot better than I do because you you chase ghosts. I don't. Um, and, and po- it's your idea is a possibility as well. It's, it's certainly something to be explored. Well, from my understanding of science, energy can only be transferred, not destroyed. So why wouldn't ghosts actually be the energy left over from a body? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you. But I'm saying that I think me, I always think of ghosts kind of like it. Uh, the people I've talked to who see ghosts, it's generally the ghost like ghost moves through the room, just walks through it. It's like they, they're not aware of anything around them, just they're kind of moving through the room, um, which is interesting to me. Whereas most of these entities that were get reported to us are are engaging with the subject and the witness. You know, they're they show up in the room at night, they appear, uh, they're engaging uh, dialogue with the people. Um, it's fascinating to me the number of people are having these kinds of encounters and how little it gets reported. It's just shocking to me. Uh, I think a lot of people are still scared that other people are going to think they're just nutcases. Yeah, that or burn them at the stake. I mean, you know, I'm <laughs> sure that's what happened. That's probably what happened, you know, 200 years ago was he got burned at the stake, you know, for telling some of that. That's just like my conversation with my boyhood friend, you know, about UFOs. It, it became apparent to me that, boy, you just can't talk to people about this subject. Now, this is going back 50 years, but I mean, how about this subject without them looking at you like you're a nutcase, you know? So, <laughs> well, yeah. good, good thing nope. me and Rodney are just nuts. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes. No. Well, because well, I'm, I'm, well, you had mentioned, you know, you are a Christian, and um, I consider myself, yeah, I'm, I'm spiritual. I'm born yeah. and raised in church, yeah. in a Christian, evangelical Christian church. And I'm not sure. If you've experienced any of this, but uh, when some of my Christian friends uh, that are, you know, heavily involved in church and stuff, I, I've been preached to yeah. quite a bit, and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and uh, and I'm sure, and I know there are cases, even and when I was, you know, cause I, I mean, I've read the Bible front to back at least yeah. at least twice in my lifetime. Yeah, uh, not all at once, but. Um, there are cases, you know, of, you know, not, uh, I wouldn't say conjuring the dead or, you know, speaking with the dead in, in the Old Testament. And uh, on, well, the one, one case with uh, King Saul, when he was talking to a, a, a prophet, one of the prophets uh, that had passed away. Um, yeah, well, also, uh, some of the things that they describe is very similar to what a lot of UFOs would be described they've seen. And, and, and a lot of people are like, no, it's not, no, it's not. you got to think how they were thinking at that time of man's knowledge of things. Yeah, yeah. And they're doing something that uh, they never even knew anything like this would exist. And so they're trying to describe what they think it is and what... Only on their not only with their knowledge. It, it's kind of I don't yeah. know if, if you've gotten into arguments with people with that or not. Well, so yeah, you you've, you've asked a, a multifaceted question here. So let me kind of try to answer it three different ways if I can. Uh, yeah. n- number one, within Mufon, we have uh, clergy and folks who are members. Uh, 
Barry Downing wrote the book UFOs in the Bible probably 30, 40 years ago. Uh, still a classic book for people who want to... Now, here's a guy who's a pastor and um, is clergy and, and wrote this other thing. Uh, what you'll find... Do we have other ones, too? Uh, um, uh, gosh, I'll blank out on his name now, but it's the Ted... Oh, gosh, I'll come up with his name here in a second. But, I mean, so there's people who are doing this, and we actually have a process right now where we're actually looking at that. But there are very fundamentalist Christians who believe that this is demonic, you know, and that's one of the things you're going to start hearing played out over and over. Um, because it's interdimensional, it must be demonic, right? Because it's not from God, and it's got to be from the devil. Um, yeah, I, there, there are demons. I mean, no, no doubt there are demons. I have no doubt about right. that. Uh, we, do, we do have people reporting to us uh, encounters with demonic entities and we basically refer to clergy we don't we don't deal with demons i mean so right uh, so we recognize that we we get them the help they need but but it's not anything we're going to do for them necessarily um but i think you know as we move down the path it's really uh more of just educating people that it's not um it's, it's not a bad thing I, yeah i've been preached to too i mean my elders in my church were questioning me at one time yeah, individually, kind of like, well, I hear you're into UFOs. Like, why would you be meddling with that stuff, you know? And uh, like, uh, and then sorcery or something, you know? And I, and I said, well, because I had this, I had this exciting when I was a kid. And I saw that, you know, so it's hard for me to deny that it exists. Like, I saw it myself. Um, and interesting, after that December sixteenth, two thousand seventeen, front page article on the New York Times hit, every one of those individuals came back to me and said, oh my gosh, did you see what was in the paper? I mean, it was like a you know, revelation for them, right? And I'm like, yeah, I saw it, yeah, 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 that's real, you know. And then now, now, now I'm the coolest guy on the block, you know. It's like you know, I want to talk yeah. to you. I mean, they want to go have look, they want to have coffee with me to talk about this UFO subject. So uh, a big door has been opened there to have a conversation with people who maybe have been closed-minded in the past. And I think we need to take that opportunity. Now you're not going to convince everybody. There's still going to be people out there who believe it's demons, you know, who, who, or who don't. I, I mean, I'm finding people who don't even want to believe it. There's other life out there anywhere, uh, which is hard to hard to believe. But um, remember, we've got a lot of flat earthers out there too. <laughs> you know, yes. so, Don't so, get me started know. on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, uh, I know our time is very limited with uh, with Jan because he's got a meeting he's got to go to. And believe me, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day for this. And I'm gonna leave. Oh, my pleasure. I'm gonna leave you with one question. Yeah. Um, if what I can, is the meaning of life? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, okay. I'm, it, I'm gonna try to say ask this without kind of laughing, but it is kind of curious. Um, what do you feel? Um, what is your opinion about probing and maybe the coalition with uh, <laughs> s- with sexual <laughs> sexual dreams? <laughs> I, 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 I didn't not get the answer. I didn't get the question. What, 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 what do I think about probing? And what was the second part of it? The, like the coalition <laughs> with uh, sexual dreams. Uh, well, I'm not. A, I'm not familiar with the last one, but, but I, I, I'll tell you, there is a sexual part of this thing. I, you know, you laugh about it, but uh, it's typically more with the reptilians. I mean, uh, the uh, the stories we get from the reptilians are very sexual type of stories. Um, uh, from from the witnesses, from the, the people involved in it. Um, now, you know there there have been other the Greys or the Tall Whites. I mean, who, who might do some kind of a procedure? I, I think a lot of it looked to me, from what I've read and what I've done from talking to people, maybe more have to do with uh, DNA collection or sperm collection, uh, trying to create a hybrid species, perhaps. Um, I mean, we're not really totally sure why that's being done. David Jacobs has written some good books on that and has done some great study on it. But, uh, I, you know, look, we're all sexual beings. I mean, we're, you know, God created us to, to go procreate and fill the earth, and we've done a darn good job of it. We're about the top eight, 8 billion people on this planet. I think when I was yeah, in grade school, we were down at 1 billion, so... If we don't stop pretty soon, we're going to be on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> we did our part. We got five kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, Mr. Harzan, I know you need to get ready for your meeting. Um, and I, once again, I appreciate you. And everybody, you. I can just yes. get online and, and look up MUFON. Um, and you, you do have local chapters. I know we have one in San Antonio, one in Houston. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I should I should just I should close out by saying you know we 
Uh, we're a 501c3. We're completely funded by the public. Um, we have no government connections whatsoever. But, but basically, we operate in 43 countries in all 50 states. It's a volunteer organization, and people can get involved actively. If they'd like to become a member uh, and get deeper into it, they can do that and help support the organization because that's how we're supported, by memberships and donations. And um, I would just encourage people to get involved, you know, one way or the other. Uh, it's an important subject, and uh, we all need to work together to get the word out to the people who, who frankly, uh, have no clue about this whole subject, and it's a brand-new thing to them. So thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. No, we appreciate thank you. you. Thank you so much. And we would need to have you on the show again because I'm telling you, we could have probably made this a four-hour interview. <laughs> There's, be happy to come back. I'm be getting, happy to. I'm getting lots of questions that I can't get to out of the chat room, and I'm sorry, everybody. I appreciate y'all chiming in. Um, we're going to go ahead and let you go, and please keep okay. in contact with us. I definitely yes. will. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right. You have a good evening, sir. You too. Bye now. Bye. So, yeah, shout out to everybody, you know, Darren and Kim, Shay, um, I think Jen was on, uh, everybody that's been listening, even if you didn't get in the chat room, we really appreciate your support. We, uh, we tend to stick with the ghosts and things because I know that's what everybody seems to be interested in, but, you know, yeah. getting UFO information out there I think is very important I'm a big believer that there are aliens um, you know I'm still yeah, on well, go ahead Rodney no I was going to say that uh, a couple of things uh, first off thanks Darren for stealing my thunder or my question that I was going to ask him about the link between any type of uh, Bigfoot and encrypted and uh, UFO because I know I have a friend of mine or we are still having a um, heated discussion about why I believe in aliens more than I would believe in Bigfoot. So um, I haven't seen either. But, you know, uh, just extraterrestrials, UFOs, it seems more likely than a Bigfoot or lizard people, swamp thing, people cover, any of them. Um, unless I see it or see some really, really good proof, uh yeah so uh and uh i was going to ask him some more questions too i don't know yeah and got off earlier too i was going to see uh what that process would be because i'm sure he probably gets a lot of people emails uh, pictures or videos what is this what is this can you come out to this area you know all these people saw this and i'm sure they go through some extensive interview you know, investigative process before, you know, they try to get out there or investigate certain areas that possibly might have be the site to have a UFO sighting or something. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know, but I'm sure there is some type of process. I was just curious about that and how they would handle certain people that just want to be famous and others that are just flat out scared. What I appreciate about them is they don't go out with the attitude that, oh, this is automatically a UFO invasion or whatever. It's kind of like the way we do our paranormal. Right. You know, we don't go right. in there just automatically thinking, oh, this place is haunted. You know, you, you got to right. get that proof. Show me. Prove it to me. Exactly. Exactly. So we still got some time, too. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, Let's see. I don't know. Who, who can we? What do we? What can we gossip about? That's all. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I'm sure there was probably. I don't. know What kind of questions were being asked? Because I was curious too. Because I'm sure there was probably some really good questions. Well, actually, I'd have to. Up there. I'd have to try to scroll back if I can. I don't know if I can or not. Uh, I I do plan on within, hopefully by 2020. To get out to uh, back out to Roswell, yeah. That, you so know, I can avoid going in the. I can go avoid going in the winter time unless I'm going skiing up there. But if I can avoid going in the winter time, I'd do it because uh, I just I like driving up the mountains out there. But I, all it is uh, for me, and I just need to get a hold of my cousin. One of my cousins out there, uh, she's kind of uh, she's kind of up there with. Uh, city of roswell she's not the mayor or city council or anything like that i think she's with the chamber of commerce or something but she has ties out there 
some more and so uh, i don't know i like to get out there and check it out even some more well, you i just know, don't want to you know you got to take me and michelle next time oh yeah yeah definitely road trip road and trip so, but i don't want to pay to go out to that see that dirt where that ufo crashed you have to pay for it now before like i said when i was a kid we were you know load up the horses in the trailer because it's about I don't know, 75, 80 something miles, maybe, uh, like north or north, north of, uh, outside of Roswell. And, um, I just remember driving out there, him, him driving out there and we riding our horses way out in that middle of the open range and, uh, seeing that. But now I think last time I heard you got to pay like 15, 20 bucks to ride out there and see it. And that was it. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, want to go look at dirt for 15 bucks. I can just go in the backyard for that. Um, yeah, oh, exactly. You know, Nayeli brought up a, a good question, and it had, having to do with angels, Bigfoots, and aliens, if there is a connection. He kind of, kind of got into that when we were talking about Bigfoot, but I, I was reading the Book of Enoch, and... My belief is, is these angels, as we call them, that maybe that they really were aliens that came here and mm -hmm. and they were, you know, trying to to create another being. And, yeah. you yeah. know, if you read the Bible, it says that, you know, God created us in his image. Well, and I'm not taking away saying, oh, there's no God. There's no such as angels. Don't. Don't anybody take me wrong for that. But, you know, I kind of wonder if that's not where it came from. And maybe he sent them here to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. You got you got people that, that that are, like I told like I told him earlier, you got people, even today, with our limited knowledge. I never thought of the three stages, you know, what they say, of, of a civilization. And we're at stage zero. <laughs> You know, we've only gone as far as, you know, man's only gone as far as the moon. Mm -hmm. um, Remind I'm my mind of thought right now. <laughs> we, and farting. That's we, what it is. We've only uh, just begun. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But uh, <laughs> the, the people, when they're describing certain things, I mean, they, they can only describe it in what their knowledge is of the world at the time. Like, like he also mentioned, the flat earthers, you know, at that one point, yeah, that was the common knowledge. Earth was flat, you know, and until one, finally one person proved that it wasn't. Um, but why not, you know, people, even to, to this day, if they see something, they can't describe it. They're, they're just going to describe what they know. Exactly. Okay, a brilliant light. What well, if it's not a brilliant light? You know, it's this type of a shape of this material looks like polished steel well it's not really that type of material you don't know that or anything so uh back in the days of the bible you know when a lot of them were you know um jacob's ladder um uh uh the wheel within a wheel you know that's what i was going to ask you i could not remember who was the one that saw that vision of the wheel inside the wheel i gotta go look again maybe somebody out there in in uh listeners or something they might know that offhand uh, i'm having a brain fart which i have quite often yeah it's i it's call it profits i call it crn now can't remember nothing <laughs> can't remember nothing <laughs> yeah that's about right for me too <laughs> well, and, well you know even some of the paintings you look at some of these old old paintings uh nazca lines there's so many things out there yeah. That you're like, how? How did they know to draw this? How did they know to lay the stones out in this order? You know, it, it, you know, even building pyramids, but a lot of that's been disproven, you know, by actual physics. Well, I think we would be conceited if we thought we were the only ones in this universe. Oh, gosh, yeah. I'm sure there are. Well, Rodney... I'm sure there are. Believe it or not, man, we're down to our last five minutes. So everybody that's listening, I hope you have a pen and paper because we would like to give you some information. Um, as always, we're big supporters of stopping out bullying. 
And so you can get involved by that by visiting stompoutbullying.org or you can call them at 877-NO-BULLY. That would be 877-662-8559. And go, you know, go to them, buy their merchandise, help them to keep their their hotlines open and having those resources to, you know, it's not just children that get bullied. A lot of times there's adults that get bullied. And we need to stop this. It's ridiculous. And also, if you could follow us on Instagram at into underscore the underscore P period, I period, T period, T period underscore. And you can do the same thing on Twitter. Um, and our Facebook is Pit Paranormal Investigators. Go on there, like us, and follow us. Get all the information from our upcoming shows and other shows that are on Paranormal Buzz Radio. And, of course, we've got to get a sh give a shout-out to them because they've been so good to us. And, yeah. and, you know, there's some investigations that we have coming up. Now, we are in need of some other equipment. A lot of this stuff is coming out of our pockets, and we, you know, we gladly do it. We're out here to help people. We don't charge them. But if you could help us out and go to teespring.com and backslash shop backslash p dash i dash t dash t dash stop plus, there's some really cool shirts and sweaters, socks, there's leggings. All these cool things. We hope to be adding some more to it soon. And, you know, go on there. You'll you'll have some great clothing. Kind of advertise us a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But, you know. The socks. No, the, the socks. socks. Yes, the socks. The ever-famous socks that everyone seems to love. Uh, you know, just all this money is going back into the group. It's not going into our bank account so we can go to Hawaii. It's going to the equipment and paying for us to drive to these locations. A lot of them are, you know, hours away and, you know, there's food and lodging and all these things and, you know, help us to help other people. Rodney, any last words? Um, yeah. Hey guys, uh, you please feel free to message us, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, if you have video, if you have pictures, you're curious about something you may have taken yourself just out and about and you don't know, you're not sure, and you, you want to get an opinion uh, that's non-judgmental, that's uh, professional, don't talk to us. I'm kidding. Uh, send, <laughs> a, you know, send us a message. You know, send us that picture, that video. Uh, be more than happy to uh, give you, you know, our, you know, our thoughts on it. And uh, I mean, you're talking several years of experience between all of us, and it's not just Kyle and I, Kyle and I, Michelle looking. Um, we have other people uh, okay. with lots of years of experience. We have resources that we can, uh, you know, help analyze the photographs or video uh, or audio as well. So uh, don't be afraid. Do that. And if he has a, any concern, trust me, all of our, um, when we talk to clients, it's all, um, it's all in private. Uh, uh, we don't ask what you're wearing or anything like that. Uh, Sometimes. Especially, you know, some, well, you, well, you do that, Kyle. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all the time with me. And, uh but no, I mean, we're, like I said, it, it, it's all it's all private. It, it's we don't post anything, you know, unless we have your permission. Um, we're not we don't do anything any anything with any type of negativity. Like, oh my God, look at this person, look what they did. They thought this, ha ha ha. No, um, we 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 you know we do take it seriously at times, and there are times just we do joke, but um, yeah, give it you know send us whatever anything you guys have. Just like a lot of the things that we have on that we're posting any videos or photos and stuff that we have posted and things. These are the ones that came directly from us uh, after we talked it over, analyzed it, got everybody's thoughts on it. And then we did that. So uh, you never know. You might We might find something. You might end up being that one lucky person that will get definitive proof on photo or audio or, or really video that would just like blow the paranormal community out of the water. 
So uh, don't be afraid. Uh, give us a shout. And if you just have questions, I've, I've, I've had several people reach out to us with certain questions or they might have a problem and they're trying to find answers. And yes. we, we, even if they're far, far away, we try to help them to get the answers that they need. Even if it's not us exactly. that can personally help them, we're going to do everything we can. And if you're part of a group and you have something coming up that you'd like to, to post, you send us you know, a picture with the descriptions on it, you know, a little banner that we can put up on our websites and, or on our um, social media. We're not here for just ourselves. We're here to help the whole paranormal community. Paul Boy.